time with the, with the owners of the evaporator, uh, trying to position it best for them. We wheeled it in a few different positions, and they decided what worked best for them, and we measured to the center of the stack, and that's where we're going to put it. After we made that decision, we wheeled the evaporator out of the way. Uh, the ceiling is steel, and we're going to be using a, an abrasive cutoff wheel to cut the hole through the liner panel. We're also going to use the same thing for cutting the hole through the roof. So always be very careful to keep your stainless steel away from, from the steel project. When you're, when you're cutting steel, especially with an abrasive cutoff wheel, sparks and, and metal bits go everywhere. And if they touch your stainless steel, if those bits get on your stainless steel, they're going to make little rust uh, spatter marks. So we have the evaporator still uh, completely covered in plastic, and we got it out of the way. All of the hoods and all the other stainless steel components are covered in blankets here. And all of the stack pipe is still in the truck. Uh, we don't need it yet, so we kept it away from the works. The hole is through the liner panel on the inside for the ceiling. And we then used a plumb bob to mark a hole. You should be able to see the light coming through. We marked the hole with a plumb bob, and then we drilled a small hole through so we can locate it from the outside on the, when we get on the roof. So the next thing is, is to go on the roof and cut that same same hole, we're going to actually use the roof jack as a template. It's a big roof jack. It is a 20 inch pipe going through. It's a, a 20 over 14 concentric exhaust system. That'll make more sense later on if you're not familiar with the concentric exhaust system. That'll make more sense when we show that. So we're going to trace our hole by locating it with that, uh, with that hole we just drilled. We're going to trace our hole with that roof jack and then cut the hole with the same, same method as we cut that hole with. So conditions today are not ideal for being on a roof. Uh, we've been shoveling snow. Right there is where the roof jack needs to go. So I just cleared the snow from that area. I'm going to give it a few minutes to dry. Okay, I am tied off and I feel fairly secure. The roof jack is sitting in place. This is a 512 roof pitch and that hole can't be circular. So with the roof jack in place, I've traced, it's hard to see the marker marks, but I've traced the, uh, the shape of the, of the penetration I'm going to make to the roof. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. And one of the things that people tend to struggle with when they attach a roof jack to a ribbed steel roof is how do you seal the top of the roof jack? And the answer is uh, from your home supplier, whoever supplied your roofing material, they will be able to supply you with these uh, foam gaskets. So this happens to be a pro rib brand, it matches the, the material we have. So I'm going to take it out of the package, but I'm not going to take it off of the adhesive backing just yet. But you can see how these conform to, to the roofing material. So by the time we screw our roof jack tightly down onto the purlins, it will be watertight. As watertight as you can get a, a steel roof. And uh, they work very successfully. We might do some touch up with some um, special roofing silicone as well, which we have a long uh, but we'll get to that, and I'll probably shoot some footage up on the up on the roof of that. So I'm going up now with a 516 nut driver because that's uh, I, the hole I just cut the the metal disc is actually screwed to a purlin. I have to cut that purlin out of the way. So 516 to cut uh, to remove that that hole that I cut that cut that knockout, and I have a, a sawzall that I'm going to use to cut that purlin out of my way. The contractor can can then um, mend that however he sees fit. Uh, but the fact is, I couldn't get a 20-inch pipe in between those, those purlins. Uh, and I'm going to have a quarter-inch nut driver to actually screw our roof jack down. I'll come back up with caulk later on, uh, if need be. And I'm going to have several more trips up on the roof yet. Our hole cut, and now we're going to install the roof jack. The roof jack is installed. I'm going to do some caulking later for sure. I screwed it down to as many supports as I could. It's very strong. There's no concern with the... Uh, with integrity, with the with structural integrity of a roof track anyway, because all the weight is going to be rested on the evaporator of this, of this install. It's hard to see, but those uh, foam rubber gaskets that I showed earlier are in place. In fact, I did two layers of them. I did one layer just above the screws where they could really be scrunched tight, but I did another layer flush to the top of the roof jack just to keep any water from damming. That is where I'm going to also install some uh, silicone later on. The evaporator is in place. 
Hoods are in place. The preheater was installed in our shop before we brought the evaporator out. We ended up taking the base stack back off the evaporator and working out at a ground level. That way we weren't working on a ladder and everything just worked much better. We also found it easier to put the first piece of internal stack pipe. In this case, the internal pipe is a 14 inch diameter. Um, that is not always going to be that same diameter. But the internal pipe, we put that inside the T first and then slid that on top of the base stack. And we found that to be uh, the secret to making it go. So from here on up, it's just putting uh, an, an inside pipe and then an outside pipe, then an inside, then an outside, and so forth all the way up. And uh, before you know it, we'll be working on the roof again. Okay, alignment fins, they get strapped around the internal pipe every few feet, as often as you, as you feel necessary. In reality, every five feet is great plenty, especially on a bigger pipe like this. There's just one nut and bolt. steel hardware, nuts and bolts, when they're, when they're ran together, there should be some kind of a never seize in place. If you don't use the never seize, you might, you might not even get the nut and bolt together before the thread seize together and you'll have to cut it off or break it off and, and start over. So that's the first one we put in. Now we're going to slide the uh, at least one piece of external pipe over the top of it and we're going to work intermittently back and forth between the inside pipe and the outside pipe, putting these alignment fins as often as necessary. We have a really unique situation here. We're trying to get big pipes through the roof and through the liner panel, the ceiling liner panel at the same time because we only have a couple of feet. We don't have any room to work in the attic. and. Anyway, the, the attic has its rafters eight feet on center, so there's no real way to walk up there uh, without major inconvenience. And um, anyway, even if we were to get in there, there's only a couple of feet. So if you look close, we actually have a piece of the outer pipe, the external pipe, in place. It's resting on that ceiling liner panel right now. And what we're going to do, we have three sections of the inside pipe screwed together already. And we're going to slide that up inside of that pipe that's resting on the liner panel, that pipe right there. We're going to slide that up inside there and nest it on this internal pipe. After that, we already have our outer pipe lined up. We're going to drop it over the top. So that'll work out real slick and we're going to have our, um, our pipes very close to uh, the point where we're going out the roof. And that'll be it for the internal pipe. I'm not going to add any more. Once I get to the roof jack, I want to start mixing the internal pipe and uh, the external pipe. I want to start mixing the steam and the smoke together. That's part of the, the advantage of the concentric exhaust system is because we're using the steam to extinguish the sparks from our smoke exhaust. So I want to mix that for six or eight or even 10 feet anyway. We've terminated the outer stack pipe with the china hat type stack cover. We put a storm collar on caulked it and caulked everything else just to be sure that there's no leaks through the roof. Total, there's about six feet of stack pipe sticking out of the roof with a to for a total of about 16 feet of stack pipe from the base stack of the evaporator up to the roof. So including the base stack, about 20 feet total, more than sufficient. This is a forced draft unit. All we're doing is exhausting. We're not actually creating a draw. So for the roof, the job is complete. Now we'll go back down by the evaporator and install all of its accessories. Next we're going to connect the T of the concentric exhaust to the hood. First insert the stainless steel elbow into the hub on the top of the hood. Next place a gasket on the elbow and on the T as shown in the picture. Then all we have to do is connect the elbow and the T using a strap stack. The exhaust system is complete. The horizontal strap stack makes an easy disconnect for removing your hood if, if ever need be during the season. And you should be able to see if I line up the camera just right, there is sufficient pitch to drain that horizontal pipe 
into the tea. The tea has gutters built all the way around it, and it will drain out right there if any condensation builds up. And there you have it. The concentric exhaust system is complete. Be sure to check out chapter three of this series as we install the industry's most efficient preheater. This is what it boils down to. Have a great day. Now I'm tied off and I feel fairly secure. So right now I'm going to use a, a marker to actually trace the inside perimeter of our, of our hole. <laughs>